your program has definitely taught me a lot, made me successful faster than I ever would have been. All right, everybody. Welcome, Passive Traders. I have one of my good friends with me today. Danny is going to be here. He's going to be talking about trading life in general and everything that he's learned along the way. Denny, um, you know, we've you've been in our programs for a little bit now. We've seen your seen your success and um uh, we're friends on Facebook, so I see you with your uh your posts from Hawaii and sitting on the beach uh yeah. from your house and all that and when we're on the coaching calls, you're always, you know, you're always making me jealous. You're always like, "Well, I'm going to Hawaii next week or I'm going to vacation. I'm going golfing." And I'm like, "Ah, oh, come on, man." <laughs> So I'm glad that we finally got to talk, you know, thank you for, mm -hmm. thank you for taking the time to be out here and, and, and talk with us. And, um, I, I can't wait to learn from you. Okay. Um, well, the way I, you know, the way I originally got hooked up with you is, um, I, I saw one of your marketing deals on, um, on the internet. Uh, and I thought, you know, well, you know, let, let's give this, uh, a look. And so I talked with Corey and, um, and I said to her, hey, look, I, I said, I'd like an honest answer that if I come in and buy the program and everything and I've got $10,000, is it possible for me to make $2,000 a month on the $10,000? She said, well, we've got people doing it. She was very honest, uh, you know, uh, and then so so I got in on the oil deal on um, I think it's blank check trading is that yes. what uh, the oil is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and boy, I learned, uh, learned a whole lot <laughs> in the first year I was just, just sailing along, making money hand over fist. Uh, and that was when oil was not very volatile and it was just making, you know, moving sideways, which is perfect for, uh, if you want to trade oil futures, you know, it's perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, calm markets are our friend. Yes. Yeah. And uh and then all of a sudden oil shot up and I think it was uh, November two years ago. It might have been three now. I you know I've been doing it quite a while. All of a sudden I went in and I looked and the market had dropped and I and I was in a position where I was gonna end up getting a margin call. So I liquidated my position, lost forty seven hundred dollars that day. And I'll be damned the next day, boom, it popped right back up. And that was the day after Thanksgiving. And then on the next call, you talked about <laughs> how the Friday after Thanksgiving is not a very high volume deal. And so one big guy in there can can make the market. He can make it drop. He can make it rise. Mm -hmm. And I fell prey to that because I didn't know. But, you know, you learn from your mistakes. And I made made plenty of them. But now uh, I, I make I make money every month. Make it on that, oil. That forty seven hundred on that, options. That forty seven hundred. Huh? Did that wipe you out? No, no. I had ten. Okay. Okay. So I started all back over, <laughs> and it took me it took me damn near a year to 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 get it to get it back. And in the meantime, you had your uh, program on stocks. Okay. So I signed up for that and. Uh, and I pulled around with the stocks for a while and I went back to oil because um, for me, uh, it's a little more passive where I can put a trade on and I will look at it once a week, you know, and um, and I feel comfortable with it. And uh, but in the then what happened, uh, what happened is we got get to the next chapter of Denny Allen <laughs> COVID hit. Mm -hmm. And my advertising agency uh, that I own, I uh, do direct mail advertising for automotive uh, industry. And I don't know if you've been reading, but the car dealers don't have any new cars. Yeah. Yeah. They don't need advertising right now. <laughs> <laughs> so so I, uh, my business the first year of COVID was down $2,400,000. Wow. The second year, uh, uh, right now... Right now, uh, uh, the second year is about 2.8 million, and now we're into the third year of the car shortage. And so far this year, I'm down one million nine hundred and seventy-six thousand dollars from where my normal years would be. So I went from a mid-six-figure income guaranteed <laughs> down to collecting my social security check with my wife. Okay, and so I go, okay, let's start fooling around fooling around with your knowledge with oil and with 
with stock options and uh, get yourself a little income. So I took twenty five thousand dollars out of our savings account and put it uh, put it into my uh, Tasty Works account, and uh, I make um, on an average uh, trading. Uh, two ETFs and then and uh, and oil and I've and I've just started doing spreads on weekly options and oil and that and I've I've been doing okay on it but you you got to watch that a little quicker because you'll you can get caught up in a margin call and everything pretty quick on that but uh, but since I have no other job okay I can watch it you know uh, I just make sure that uh, when I go to the golf course on my daily trip. <laughs> <laughs> that I've got my phone with me, and I uh, and I can hop in on the TastyWorks phone app and uh, protect myself if I need to. But uh, right, Matt. Uh, but uh, what I learned most from you was patience. Oh, wait, wait, go back, go back. So, how are you doing okay. there? So, what, <laughs> how you? You're like okay. So you, all right. So I'm following the story, right? So you were mm-hmm. you were learning like you've been in our program, I think, two years. So uh, three. You, Three. three years. Okay, three years. Yeah. So you, you learn yeah. how to do the oil. You were doing great. And then you had one bad day where it crashed and you basically went back to zero and you had to start over uh-huh. again. Right. Yeah. So that at least you didn't lose it. You had, you know, you get back your gains. Then, mm-hmm. you know, COVID hit. So you had to basically all hands on deck for the business trying to figure that out. Now yeah. you're at the point where, like, okay, you know what? I got this stuff that I know how to do. Let me see if I can make some money on the side. So you've been you've been trading oil. You've been doing. Um, you said you you doing two ETFs. So what are you doing on the? Yeah. What type of I strategy? do? Uh, I do SPX and RUT. So what strategy are you doing on those? Okay. Well, let's go back to my educational background. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I have a master's degree in environmental engineering. My master's thesis was the statistical modeling of uh, dam failures uh, due to excess runoff. Okay. So I'm a numbers guy, a numbers geek. I understand standard deviations, regression line, Bayesian coordinates, uh, you know, all of this fancy mathematics that all of these uh, indicators that when they write them, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, I know how they get there. So I started looking at the stuff and I started looking for patterns because uh, standard deviation and stuff like that is nothing other than patterns, okay, that that, uh, create a probability statement of the same thing occurring, okay? Mm -hmm. So I started looking and I found a correlation between the VIX uh, that's, uh, you know, on the CMOE. Right, the VIX, right? Yeah. And uh, what what happens with it. And so I take the VIX and say it was, uh, it traded at 2588. It opened this morning at 2588. I can't, I can't remember exactly what it is. I go in and I divide the VIX by 16. Now, why do I divide by 16? You can't figure no it idea. out, can you? No, I have no idea. No. Okay. <laughs> there are 200, there are 256 trading days okay. in the market, right? The square root of 256 is 16. Okay. So I take take the 16, I divide by 16, and that gives me a percentage that's 87% accurate as to the upward or downward movement of SPX or RUT on a daily basis from what it opens at. Not what it closed at yesterday, but when the opening bell dings, like this morning, uh, yesterday, RUT closed at 18.06. Okay. But this morning when the bell rang, it was 1843, just for a short period of time until the CPI stuff caught up. Right. And then the rear end dropped out of it. Okay. Yeah. Right. But so what I do is I go in and take what it opens at and take take the percentage of what it opens at. Uh, uh, say it's uh, one point. It was 1.61 today. So you take 1.61% of the opening bell and you subtract that from what it opened at and you add it to what it opened at and you gives you a high and a low range, okay? Say that again, do me, do me again. So okay. you take the VIX divided by 16. Uh-huh. Okay, then what do you do with that? Okay, you multiply uh, the, the 1.61%, okay, times uh, what it opened at, okay? And that comes out to uh, roughly what? Th- th- close to 30 bucks. I don't have my calculator here. Okay. So you would take, you would take it. And if it opened at 1843, you'd take the 30 off of that. That would be 1813. And then you take the 1843 and add uh, 
the 32, which would be 1873. So that means that you've got an 87 point something percent chance that the rut is going to close somewhere between the 1813 and 1873. Okay. Okay. So now we wait until between 1030 and 11 o'clock central time. Okay. And uh, the reason that I wait until then is if you look, the market goes in, it opens, it bounces up and down. And if it's on the way up at between 1030 and 11 o'clock, you have what's what uh, usually happens and happens most days is a mid-morning reversal of some sort where people are in taking profits or, or getting rid of losses. Okay. And at that point, it gives you a direction of the momentum of the market for the rest of the day. And the rest of the day, barring no news or anything, it pretty much goes sideways or slightly up or slightly down. And I go in and sell a put, put spread or a call spread uh, at, the, at uh, the bottom or the top of those ranges away from the way the momentum of the market's going. Okay. And I do that on a daily basis. So if you think it's going down, you sell calls. If you think it's going up, you sell puts. Right. At the end of that range. So is that like, yeah. uh, uh, you said 87%. So what is that like? That's like one and a half standard deviations? One and a half standard deviations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. And, and how, generally. And that's what you do. You, but but why you do the VIX? Because what does the VIX have to do with the rut? The VIX is based the, on the puts the VIX, of the SPX. The VIX gives you the volatility the market as a whole as a whole okay right but it has to do with the volatility of the sbx the rut has its own i know okay okay but the rut is based on 2000 stocks okay Mm -hmm. and vix takes into account the volatility of what's happening in the 2000 stocks and dow jones and the standards and pours the way they calculate the vix okay because i thought the vix was just only on the sbx the 500 the large ones uh yeah, yeah. Well, that it is, but but it just but works. Find, there's <laughs> yeah. There's a cor- there's a correlation between mm-hmm. what's happening in SPX and what happens in rut. Okay. Oh, yeah. They're yeah. Okay. Right. They are correlated. Uh-huh. So it just it just yeah, happens to just work out. Right. Okay. And, and it's just and it's just like if you want to see what's going on with uh, going to happen for disaster time with the SPX, go in and look at what's going on with QQQ. If QQQ is dropping. You better watch yourself on the SPX because about I forget what percentage of uh, of the SPX uh, is Fang stocks now. Right. Yeah. Okay. So how long how long have you been doing this? I've been doing it about four months. Four months. Okay. And you you back tested it? Uh, yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I, I spent a couple a uh, couple hundred dollars and got some uh, good back testing software and back tested it and. Uh, and it went and it, and uh, if you go through the thing, it wins about 80, 80 some percent of the time. OK. And how much are you trying to make on each trade? I don't, I, OK, I'm trying to make I'm trying to make four uh, percent, uh, three and a half to four percent on a trade. OK. And these are weekly trades or daily trades? Daily. So you want the, SP, the for, SPX, the SPX has a closing every day. OK. Right. So these expire the rat, at the close. Yes. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the rut, uh, and the rut has Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So I only cl- trade the rut on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Cool. And how are your results been so far? Um, that I'm doubling my money every month. Wow, a hundred percent every month. Yeah. Now, uh, when uh, when Putin cut the pipeline off, okay, mm-hmm. and the mar- and the rear end fell out of the market that day. I was at my computer when it started happening and I closed everything out. If, if I hadn't closed it out, I probably would have lost about three or 4,000 that day. But I don't, you know, what I do, Alan, is I take a future value calculator, okay? And uh, if this month I want to make $10,000, I plug in $10,000 and I put three and a half percent of $10,000 times 21 or 22 trading days. And I print it out and it tells me how much I need to make each day in order for that to occur. And then I keep a spreadsheet that I'm plus or minus off of the predicted number that I was supposed to be at. Mm -hmm. And I adjust my trading uh, from there. Now, like right now for this month, 
I'm uh, so far I'm up 900 bucks uh, as of closing today. Uh, so I'm actually uh, today is the 13th. What, uh, 13th, yeah. And I'm actually to where the tw- where I should be on the 20th of the month. Okay. Uh, so if if I think the market's going to be a little volatile or or there might be some bad news coming, I can lay off. Okay. And skip a day and see what's happening. Okay. Um, that's where what you taught me is the patience is that you, you don't have to do it every day. Right. Right. So, okay. So you're saying that you're doubling the 25 every, every month or no? no doubling how much I want to make. Uh, I, okay. I've got 25 in there, but uh, you're trying to say make I want to make, if, if I want to make 10 this month, I put 10 up. And uh, with the with the whole idea that I could lose all ten thousand of it, okay. Okay, so and you're only using all, ten. Yeah, but I'm only using ten. You're only using and if ten. If I lose the ten, if okay. I lose the ten, then you know I'm I'm a big boy. You know, we try again next month. You know. So like today's the thirteenth. You're only up nine hundred. So you still got a ways to go before you get to the goal. No, no, I'm up nine hundred over how much I should be up. So you've already made the ten, and you've made another nine hundred. No, 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 no. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> let, hold, hold on, hold on a second. Okay, okay. I start out okay with uh, ten thousand in the account. Okay, okay. Mm-hmm. and I go to a future value calculator and I plug in uh, say three and a half percent. Okay, uh, and I plug in twenty one days. Okay, yeah. Well, that'll at the end of the month. If I do that, I should have around twenty one thousand dollars. Okay, and what the future value calculator says is that uh, on day uh, on day two, I should have 10300 and some dollars on it. Okay. okay. And then day three, I should have close to ten seven. Okay. Mm-hmm. So I go down what the day is, what it says where I should be to achieve the deal. And I'm up 900. Okay. Over that. I see. Okay. 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 So you're so on pace. On you're, 13, on, you're better. You're yeah, better than I, doing on pace to double. Yeah. Right. I'm uh, yeah. I, I do uh, what's called a pace and penny deal. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. And, okay. and so, so that's what and, you're doing on the SBX on the rut and you're also doing uh-huh. oil. So how do you, yeah, how much then, do you put in oil? On oil, I buy, buy maybe uh, two to three contracts. Okay. Of the weeklies now. Okay. And do a credit spread on them mm-hmm. and try to make, you know, four or 500 bucks, uh, on, uh, the credit spreads and, uh, let them, let them, uh, expire worthless. Okay. And, uh, and that, and the only, and I'm only trying that because, uh, uh I know how to make money doing the monthlies and, mm-hmm. and getting in at 45 days and, and my, and, uh, monitoring it. So, um, I, I, I'm a natural born tinkerer. Okay. Right. And, uh, and, and it can cost me money at times. Okay. But, you know, I, I guess I'm fortunate that I'm not looking where my next meal is coming from. Right. Cool. So like today, you know, we have, uh, SBX is down 4.3% today. Big move, Mm -hmm. big move down. So I'm assuming based on what you said, when you got in, well, SBX had already started moving down. So you sold calls today. Yeah, I sold calls. I saw, uh, sold uh, sold uh, four thousand uh, four thousand and ninety uh, and four thousand and ninety five. Okay, and then that, basically you didn't have any trouble today. No, uh-uh. so and you- yesterday, yesterday it went up. Okay, uh, but when I ent- when I entered it, it was going sideways, and it was more be- uh, advantageous on the calls yesterday. So I sold 40, uh, 4185 and uh, 4190 yesterday. Okay. And, uh, you know, and th- they, they expired worthless. Okay. Uh, and is there any time you do both puts and calls? Yes. If, uh, if it, if it looks like it's going absolutely sideways, uh, uh, like I say, I enter my trade between 10, 30 and 11 and, um, I usually go to the golf course about one o'clock, but before I go to the golf course, I pull my account up and I look at it. And if it looks like it's going sideways, then I create an iron condor and I go in and sell puts. Okay. You know? And then yeah. what about a stop loss? Do you have any? Yeah. I put stop losses in on everything. What percent? Like, how do you know when to get out? Uh, I, I put 40% in. 
Okay. So, so 40% okay. loss. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. And so you're pretty happy with that. Yeah. I'm, you know, and, until it burns me, I guess I will be. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for it. I've, you know, I've done this long enough now that I know that nothing is fail safe. Right. Right. No, but you're mm -hmm. doing this in a time that's it is pretty volatile. You know, I mean, VIX today was at 27, but yeah, um, even even so, the VIX is kind of low for what's going on and all the stuff that's happening with the Fed and the, the you know we're still in a bear market, so we're still getting these wild uh, bull market rally. Well, not not a bull market rally, but a uh, like a whipsaw rally to go up, and then we turn yeah. around, we head back down on a dime, and so it's still it has been very up and downy and so well you know, having yeah, uh, you know the strategy that you're just like hey i'm not gonna i'm just gonna play day by day and not worry about it at night i think that makes a lot of sense yeah um you know and i, I am a uh, very very avid reader okay so i read barons i read uh, investors business daily and stuff like that um not because i think that they um are going to enlighten me on anything. But what I have read is there's a lot of guys in there that tell about the history of the market. Okay. Um, and for every bear market, uh, you know, it usually lasts nine to 18 months. And there's usually four to five mini rallies in there that everyone is calling the bottom of the bear market. And then it drops again, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so if you understand that, you don't get too overly enthused with a rising SPX or a Dow. OK, right. Yeah. Yeah. It's I mean, that comes with experience or like you said, you know, learning and education. Um, mm -hmm. Cool. So what do you see going forward? Like, well, what's what's next for you? Matt, you know, I, I just enjoy doing this stuff. You know, I mean, uh, you know, I'm in the twilight, twilight of my life, you know, I'm <laughs> I'm 76 years old, uh, Matt. I'm a real young 76. I mean, I'm very mobile. I play play golf every day. Uh, right now, while we're speaking, I'm in Duncanville, Texas, at my grandson's tennis match. <laughs> Matt, uh, uh, he just he just uh, won his doubles match, and so in about a half hour, he'll start playing singles. Uh, so we'll watch that. But uh, yeah, it's you know, a like little it's a little week, hot Alan, for tennis, though. I'll tell you that it's uh, a little it's, hot. Uh, it's not, it, yeah, 95 right now here. But, uh, you know, my normal week is uh, uh, yesterday was Monday. I was at junior high volleyball in Flower Mound, uh, which is 30 miles away from where we live. Uh, today, I'm at varsity tennis in Duncanville. That's not bad. That's close to where I live. Uh, tomorrow, I got off. Then Thursday, I got junior varsity tennis. Uh, that's a home meet. And then Friday night, I've got um, got varsity football in Flower Mound. Okay. Uh <laughs> That, so almost every day of the week, I'm doing something with the grandkids. So you got some of the grandkids, you're going golfing every day, and you're still trading every day. Yeah, and I'm trading every day. You know, and, you know, thanks to you, I've, you've shown me ways that I don't have to sit there and stare at a computer <laughs> to make yeah. money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not uh... – I, I really like what you're doing. I like your style. You know, it's like, okay, you know, put a trade on, let it work, and then go enjoy my life. Yeah. And, like if, it, it. and if it doesn't work, so what? You know, there's another day. <laughs> you yeah. Know? But the um, return is good enough that, you know, you get compensated. Even if there are losses, The yeah. you're you're playing with bigger numbers. So it's like, hey, if I yes. can make 100%, then yeah, I can lose 20, 30, 40%. That's okay. Yes. Because mm -hmm. I can still make much more than that. You know, at the stock market, they're like, oh, way, you know, you shouldn't lose more than five or 10 percent of your account. Well, you're only making 10 percent a year. So mm -hmm. obviously you don't want to lose more than that. But if the numbers are bigger, then you can take bigger, bigger yeah. houses, and bigger bumps. So and I'll tell you, I'll tell you what I use. I still uh, I still use your option trading uh, Google spreadsheet <laughs> for the grand spread. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I use it every day. <laughs> yep, makes it simple, right? It just calculates yeah. it all for you. The only, the only, the only thing is, I went in and cha changed the twenty five percent to to forty. To forty. <laughs> yeah. 
but I like it because it's like simple, you know, and I'm sure people listening to this are going to be like, okay, what do I do again? So it's like, just going <laughs> to recap, you know, you wake up in the morning, you see where, where the SBX and the rudder opening, right? Mm -hmm. You yeah. take a look at the, the VIX, you divide it by 16 mm -hmm. and then, and then you add that to the SBX. You, that, that's your, that's your percentage movement in, uh, in, in, in the ETF. Okay. okay that's a percentage it's, move of the SBX. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you multiply and that percentage by the open, by the open, and then and you, that, you that find your range. You the, that'll give you the that'll give you the movement. Which uh, so say it's eighteen forty three, and say say you you divide by say, say it's say VIX is thirty two. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, okay. You divide by sixteen. That's two, two, right? Two percent. Okay, so say uh, okay, SBX, so that's a percentage. Uh, okay, yeah, two percent. So say rut opened at eighteen. 100 today you mm -hmm. take 2% that's $36 okay mm -hmm. then you, you take 36 off of 18 1800 okay uh and you know that puts you down to uh 1764 17, and then you add 36 to the 1800 and that gives you uh 1836 that gives you 1836 yeah cool <laughs> so we got the range that's about one and a half standard deviations that's a 87% probability about that. And for you, it's been working pretty good. And you set it at a 40% stop loss. Oh, and then the other thing is that you get into the trade about an hour and a half, an hour, hour and a half after the market opens. And so, no. Yeah. Okay. And the reason the, the hour, hour and a half is it, it took me a while to realize this. The market tends to, at times gap up or gap down okay and then about an hour to an hour and a half later it kind of self-corrects itself yeah and sometimes that, yeah yeah but, but they say uh, you know the the opening bell is usually amateur hour and so like you yeah know, I, I mean i could have told you that i don't trade the first hour of the day you know no <laughs> markets open markets open about 8 30 here central time yeah, so right. i don't trade before 10 o'clock which is exactly an hour and a half so i do this yeah this is, that's that that that's when that's when i'm looking at the momentum indicators and everything you know yeah. and then you let your trade expire yes Okay. So you got that going on and then, you know, you well, have... the good thing about it is if the trade's good. You can't get out of it anyway, because you've made all your money by about two o'clock and, and you <laughs> go in and try to close the trade that says, uh, say you get the message. Uh, some of the bid ask are zero. <laughs> so, okay. So you got that going on and you got the oil weeklies going uh -huh. on. So yeah. that keeps you busy. That keeps you diversified. You're making decent amount. You're happy. That's awesome. I love it. That's that's what this is all about, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, keeps you, me going to Hawaii. <laughs> yeah, like you said, you know, life is good, right? You're hanging out with the grandkids. Yeah. You got, you still have the house in Hawaii. You go on vacations every wherever you feel like it. So, um, I like it. I really. Yeah, I'll be in, I'm in two weeks. I'll be in New York City. That's great. Cool. Going to going to see uh, Billy Joel at Ma Madison Square Garden. <laughs> Very nice. So, did you yeah. do any kind of trading before you came across us? Yes. Uh, and I lost my rear end. Oh no, that's not good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I was way too aggressive. Okay. Uh, and not patient. And that's when I, I was going to get out of, uh, at the equity market completely when I saw your oil deal. Okay. And, um, you know, and I figured I had a better chance at oil. Because it's something that we all need, and it's something that's not going out of style. Even right. if we go to all electric cars, uh, what people don't understand is that uh, two thirds of the pharmaceuticals and all of the plastic comes from oil, and that's mm -hmm. all. None of that's going away. Nope. There's going to be a demand. Yeah. In fact, you know, even with everything, with the more solar and the more wind power they bring on, the world is still using more oil now than we have like 10 years ago. The demand oh, continues to increase, yeah. it just goes up and up and up every year. So, yeah, it's not going anywhere anytime soon. So we're going to continue to trade it, even if demand starts going down. You know, yeah. there, It's such a big market that we'll be trading oil for, uh, you know, for the next 20, 30 years. So, yeah, no problem there. That's I mean, it, it was a different. So basically the you were trading equities but then when you found out and you learned about how we sell options that kind of really flipped the switch yeah that that intrigued me okay I, uh first of all <laughs> being uh, uh well my background before i got into the advertising thing is i i owned a car dealership okay i owned a ford ford dealership and um 
if if you know anything about car guys, we are super aggressive and we love leverage. <laughs> 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 and uh, and when I saw options and I saw the leverage available, I said, "This is my ticket." <laughs> so then, why why are we still at twenty five thousand? Why don't we go more? You know, I've I've got a uh, I've got a wife. Okay, that. Uh, um, Funny story, okay? Uh, Auto Nations came in and bought me out, uh, I guess it's 28 years ago now. Mm. And I got um, a very sizable check. And the day I got that check, my wife reached over and she grabbed that check. (laughs) And she said, seed money only comes once in a lifetime. And this is going for our old age and for fun. I go, okay. Well, one of the ways that I've stayed married 52 years is that I always get the last word. Yes, dear. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so she, uh, in, in, in the money, uh, she basically watches it, okay? And, uh, and she thinks that, you know, a lot of what I'm doing, although I'm making money and stuff like that on, on a basis uh is a little bit too risky for her, her deal. And so that, you know, that's what she has given me to play with. Okay. That makes sense. But consequently, I have pointed out to her recently that because of that money, she's not had to buy any groceries out of her retirement account, you know, <laughs> off of her social security check. I play for all the plane tickets, wherever we go, uh, this trip to New York, uh, that, uh, I've got, uh, a thousand dollars in Hamilton tickets invested, you know, <laughs> and she didn't have to pay for any of that. So don't you think it's about time that we started looking at adding more to that? You know, <laughs> so Matt, I think by the end of the year, she might, you know, let me fool with a little bit more. Now, do you but, have, a, do you have other investments and stuff elsewhere? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. the money's coming in. So it's not like you need this to live off of. No, 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 no. Uh, Matt, uh, Matt, like, it's like I said that uh, when my, COVID uh, stopped an annual mid six figure income. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, I mean, on a normal week uh, before COVID, um, I was, well, in a normal month, I was doing 800,000 to 1 million pieces of direct mail a month. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, it was a good sized business. Okay. Uh, uh, with uh, annual revenues uh, anywhere from uh, two and a half to three. Three million dollars, and and I'm a one man show. I have no employees in that business. You no. Know, um, so it's still uh, so, running. You still run that business? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. It's in fact, uh, in fact, I uh, uh, um, just got a job today. I mean, you know, they're they're few and frequent, uh, infrequent. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I mean, you know, I might have made thirty thousand bucks for the whole year doing that. You know, yeah. which uh, you know. That used to be a week sometimes, you know. Uh, uh, you know so, well, so let me you know, ask you this. The, uh, are we going to see below MSRP prices anytime soon? No. No? No. In How fact, about at uh, MSRC? Like I've, I've seen at, prices that are like way above, like double MSRP. I'm like, yeah, no, I'm not paying uh, it, that. As soon as the chip shortage is alleviated and they start to get inventory, mm-hmm. sometime in the next 18 to 24 months, uh, They'll have inventory again. Oh wow! Um, Matt, uh, but uh, you know, I don't know if you've seen what's happened to the used car market. No, it's taken off like crazy. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, uh, my wife uh, has macular degeneration, uh, and so uh, leasing a car is is it, unless you have a business purpose, leasing a car is a bad investment. Okay. Uh, my wife had macular degeneration. We didn't know if she was going to, they were going to be able to get it stopped and, and whether she was going to uh, uh, be able to continue to drive. So uh, the car that I'm sitting in right now uh, is her car. Okay. And we leased it mm-hmm. and it had a $21,000 uh, residual uh, on it at the end of the lease period. And uh, we were, you know, we were going <clears> to <throat> uh, turn it in. Uh, and then I pulled up uh, what the value on it was. The retail value on this car uh, was uh, $31,000. <laughs> so I went down to the Ford dealership and wrote them a check for the car. And they kept wanting me to lease another one. I know. No, thank you. You know, 
And so, uh, and that's happened all throughout the industry. And it's consequently forced the used car prices way up. Mm-hmm. And so what's going to happen? Two fold things are going to happen in that real quick. I know that, you know, I don't want to waste all your day on this, but this is interesting. Once the inventory get levels get up, all of these car dealers that have these massive used car inventories are going to have so much water in their inventory. And water is uh, excess pricing uh, to what the current market book value on the vehicles is. In mm-hmm. other words, if you if you can't sell it for what you own it for, you're going to lose money. Okay, right. and uh, and a lot of these big you live in Houston, I live in Dallas. Uh, a lot of these big dealerships that have two and three hundred cars in the ground are going to have a million and a half to two million dollars in water in their inventory, and they're going to have to get rid of them. Okay, and so the rear end will fall out of the used car market. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, so right now consumers are getting screwed on automobiles, but the dealer has his day of reckoning coming too. Yeah. But if you need a car now, you're screwed. So. Yeah, if you need a car now, you're in trouble. <laughs> a buddy of mine uh, went and looked at a Subaru Outback with 19,000 miles on it, that it was a year and a half old. And uh, they wanted $35,000 for it. He about wow. choked, you know. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Don't get in a wreck. I mean, my car, I've been thinking about my wife's like, can you just get a new car, please? I'm like, no, I like it. You know, I'm trying to get it up to 200,000, you know, miles on it. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to get there. I mean, it's fine. It works. You know, um, it's comfortable. It looks fine from the outside. Everything inside yeah. is comfortable. It works. You know, it's a nice Toyota. Yeah. It keeps running. Um, but she's like, can you get some bigger? I'm like, all right. So we looked around and I'm like, man, I don't want to pay this stuff. You know, it's not even that it's not like we can't afford the payment or anything. It's just from where it used to be to where it is now. There's no difference. The car is the same. You just charging me a whole lot yeah. more for no reason, just because yeah. you know, there's a you can. So, yeah, yeah, no, I don't want to play that game. Yeah, that, their day of reckoning <laughs> is coming, though. Cool beans. All right. Well, do you have any um, do you have any advice for our listeners? people that are learning and trying to figure out like you found your way, right? You found your niche Mm -hmm. in trading and it took you, I don't know how many years, you know, you were trading two years, two years, but how many years were you looking before, before that? Oh, uh, uh, five years. I I probably, uh, probably five years before I found you. Okay. Two years of, of learning and testing, not doing what you told me to do a couple (laughs) times and getting, and getting, and getting burned to realize to realize that the things that you teach patience, uh, uh, you know, uh, just the little thing and think or swim, your standard deviation deal, mm-hmm. you know, seeing, Oh, oh you've got a red line there. <laughs> that, 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 that's not good. Right. <laughs> you know, uh, just, you know, just those little things, you know? So the biggest advice, the best advice I could give to an individual be patient. Don't try to hit home runs. You know, the age old adage, pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered is so true. It's like one of my rules on the SPX, you know, a $5 spread. Okay. A $5 spread on the SPX uh, is 500 bucks. Okay. So if I'm trying to make four to 5% a day, that means I'm looking to get 20 cents on my credit spread. Mm-hmm. That's it. 20 cents. Okay. Um, and if you look at what the delta is on that, it's usually 12 to 13, which puts me in a real advantageous position. Mm-hmm. You know, um, so don't get greedy. Just let time be your, let time be your friend. Right. Yep. And that actually might be a shortcut for you. So you don't even have to worry about the VIX. You just go in to get the 12 Delta and boom, there you yeah. go. <laughs> That's 80, well, it's about 88%. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of, of doing about a year's study on this, okay? Because I back tested it using the Delta, mm-hmm. okay? And um, in, some, in some wild market swings, it comes out that it doesn't work out right, okay? Right, yeah. But, uh, but the thing is, but, it's hard to back test it because you're saying that you go in after looking at it visually and being like, okay, I want to be on this side or I want to be on that side. You can't backtest yeah. that unless no. you do it manually yourself, 
with a like a software that I like the one I use where you got to go in day by day by day. If you yeah. use one of those programs where you just put in the numbers and just let it run, no, you yeah, can't it, do it, it doesn't work. You've got to you've got to plug them in yourself. Yeah, and it's time consuming, mm-hmm. yep. <laughs> especially if you're doing dailies. Yeah, <laughs> because you got you got two hundred and fifty six for every year. <laughs> yes, yeah, and I mean, like you know, when we when we back test a new strategy, it's like I wanna I want you know a good ten years of data. You know, I want to yeah. see the the ups and the downs and those flats and the recessions and the bull market and everything. I want to know that it's going to work long term, not yeah. just for a couple. Because I've been burned on that too. You know, I I've back tested different strategies like uh, the butterfly on McDonald's and the butterfly on. A Walmart and they worked yeah. great for five years. For five years, they made money. I went in there with guns blazing. You know, I took like every money, all the money I had at the time, $25,000 on one trade, just one trade, put it all and boom, it blew up. And I'm like, what happened? Oh my you God, know, man, maybe know. it was a fluke. I'm going to do it again next month. Next month, boom, blew up again. I'm like, oh, it stopped working. You know, it's like, what the heck is you going know, on? Those, so. those butterflies and iron condors look great. <laughs> you know, you, you sit there and you look at the leverage you've got on that. You go, whoa, you mm-hmm. know, but, you know, you got to think, why isn't everyone doing it? Well, <laughs> there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason. Yep. yep. So there's lots of little tweaks behind it. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but it's, this has been fun, Denny. I'm going to let you go. I appreciate your okay. time. And, um, yeah, if there's anything you need, please reach out to us. We're always here for you. And thank you for sharing your wisdom. Okay. Well, you know, I mean, I, I just want to tell you and your listeners that that uh, that your your program has definitely taught me a lot and made me a lot uh, made me successful faster than I ever would have been. That's awesome. That's good to hear. Yeah. I made my day. Okay. <laughs> there you go. Right. I love it. I love it. Thank you, have, you so you much. You have a good one. Okay. <laughs>